Elio guys and welcome back and in today's old video we're taking another look at the lovely Yuki as I promised the video is finally here you guys the updated version of Yuki but we do have the fire version of Yuki pulled up right here and she is a attacker type uh, sitting at a whopping 27k HP 3.3k attack and then 2.2k defense and also spoiler alert if you're new to the game she also has a super evolution which basically helps boost her stats which is very useful of course so seeing Yuki like this actually in my mind just looks weird because I'm just so used to seeing her super evolution that my brain is like who is this but let's take a look at these lovely skills so for her three star skill she does have defense down which grants a 7% chance to reduce the enemy's defense for two turns which is great for having other damage dealers slide in there and do all kinds of damage all kinds uh, and then for her five star skill though she does have defense down once again but instead this is a 60 percent chance to do it for two turns and it damages all enemies of course and now yuki's animations are unfortunately dirt nasty slow but with proper timing they could be very useful for your team compositions which we will kind of go into here a little bit later but taking a look at the skill books uh the three star version of defense down received a 20 percent damage increase and goes up to i believe what was that 80 percent Yep, 80% for the 3 star one, and then for the 5 star version, it receives a 15% damage boost and goes up to 70%. No, it's 20%. It's 80% once again for 2 turns. So, booking is helpful in this situation right here, but if you only have X amount of Yuki books, don't put it into this one, just FYI. If you get more in the future, feel free to do so. But you may be wondering, but Elia, okay, I have her, where is she useful at? Well, if you're in a certain scenario where you need double defense down, I think she's useful in that content. Uh, at some point in time, she was being used in Titans too, so you could definitely run her into Titans as well. But over time, she's just been phased out because better options have appeared with them tweaking Nat 4s here and there. But outside of that, there's really not much use for her because she's basically there just to apply defense down so if you need a reliable defense downer who isn't fire candling then you do have yuki and that's pretty much it like i don't use my fire yuki at all at this point in time so if you are a avid fire yuki supporter leave down in the comments below where you guys use her at and then coming in next after that though we do have water yuki who is a tank type she's sitting at 37k hp 2k attack and then 2k defense too so those stats seem very very bad but she is a nat 4 with a super evolution so it does get bumped up a little bit there to help with her survivability though she shouldn't be dying anyways but let's take a look at these skills so for her 3 star skill she has sap which grants a 70 percent chance to inflict the enemy with two types of sap for one turn Eh, very, very lackluster in my opinion. And then for her 5 star skill, it's a 60% chance instead for two types of sap for two turns. Okay, I can deal with that. So the main usage of sap, of course, is bringing it into golems or basically fighting enemies with a high amount of HP, which isn't titans. So you could also probably slide her in into the, I believe, the water colossus and sap him that way if you don't have any other sappers. And that's really up to you to decide to do that or not because Yuki does have a dirt nasty slow animation here, but even though it's dirt nasty slow, she's still once again very useful. But taking a look at the skill books right here, uh, the three star sap does receive a 10% uh, damage increase, useless at this point in time, goes up to I believe 80% for two turns. 80% for two turns. Uh, then the five star version of Sap also receives a 15% damage increase and goes up to 80% once again for two turns. So with both of her Saps fully booked up, it does make her sapping a lot more reliable than what it was before. But my main issue with uh, the lovely Water Yuki here it's not so much her slow animation, it's just that so much investment is needed to get her to this point to make her viable when we have access to a mon like Water Sea Star, which Smart Study just went ham with, and they made her a very good sapper with like one eighth of the investment needed for Yuki. Especially as a newer player, the chances of you pulling X amount of Yukis to get this one to Evo 3 in particular is very low. The chances of you pulling out Sea Stars? You probably have 5 million of them before you get your lovely Water Yuki to Evo 3 if you want to use her. So in this case, it's not that she's bad, it's just that we have easier options that are just more cost and time effective. At least in one man's opinion, but I'm not stopping you from going out there super evoing her and using her in Golems or Colossus or wherever you basically need a separate. Just one man's opinion. Don't come for me. 
And then coming in next though, we do have Wood Yuki who is a bounce type and she's sitting at 30k HP, nearly 2.7k attack, and then 2.4k defense. So decent stat distribution. Of course, get, it gets boosted up with her super evolution as well, which is a very nice thing. But in terms of her skills, because all the Yukis basically have the same 3 and 5 star skill ex except one of them, it's very easy to kind of see where her usage is at. So for the 3 star skill, expose weakness, grants a 70% chance to expose the enemy's weakness for two turns. This means more damage for whoever takes that exposed weakness hit. And then it's also the same thing for her five star skill where this basically turns into an AOE. Now I honestly haven't seen exposed weakness used in like PVE just because I don't think it makes sense to because if you're gonna waste a turn getting exposed weakness to get stuck on the enemy. Why not spend that turn making sure that they've passed away via puncture or any other wave clears in the game. So her main usage, of course, would be something like Colossus if you wanted to use her there. Maybe the Dimensional Dungeon if you're feeling spicy. And in terms of Apophis, uh, that's very interesting of where you could use her at there. I'm not sure if I actually use mine there or not, but it could be interesting having that Exposed Weakness lineup there. And of course, Titans was where I was using my lovely Wood one too. However, once again, Times have changed, at least for me. I understand people don't have all the Ashramon that I have because I've been playing the game for 25 years. But, you know, there was a point in time where I used her as part of my Titan composition. But I ended up getting other mons to basically fill in her slot and help me do at least five more damage in terms of Titans. But once again, just a setup mon. Her main selling point isn't to do damage. It's just to help other Ashramon do damage. So we can see right here, her three star version of Exposed Weakness receives a 20% damage boost. And it goes up to, I keep forgetting these numbers, man. 80% for two turns and then it's going to be the same thing for the five star version where it's a 20% damage increase And then it goes up to 80% for two turns once again. Let me double check. Yep So that's pretty much it. She's there to help someone else do damage and as soon as you pull something better You'll probably end up replacing her, but I could be wrong about that I don't think I am but I could be all right, and then next up here, we do have Light Yuki, who's also an attacker type. One of the best choices that you could have made if you decided to pick her for your light slash dark uh, nat 4 card. Uh, I've been using her ever since I've gotten her, and nothing has changed. If you guys have seen my Merlin review, you would know that I've been using the same PvP team for the past 28 years. And nothing has changed whatsoever in terms of that PvP team as well. And I can just auto to a point where I'm happy and never have to manually do PvP at this point in time. But anyways, yeah, she is an attacker type. She's sitting at 27k HP, 3.4k attack, and then 2.3k defense. So quite a frail girl, but she can also hit with the best of them here. But let's take a look at the skills here. So for her 3-star skill, 80% chance to inflict shock for one turn. Shocked units basically are in between not only being stunned but they also have like a minor defense down applied to them as well the game doesn't necessarily state or show that stat difference with the defense down but it's a little bit more damage which over time if they're taking multiple hits can actually add up and then in terms of her five star skill 50 percent chance to inflict shock for two turns that is dirt nasty low that is terribly low and if you guys are watching the video you're like why would i use her if that's only a 50 percent chance for two turns. How is she so good, Elio? Why are you still using her with that lovely rate right there? Hold on. Hold on, fam. Hold on. So for her three star shock, it does receive a 20% damage increase, which is nice considering she has a 3.4k attack stat. You know, this is totally without super evolution applied as well. And then it does go up to a whopping two turns. So she's sitting at 80% chance to shock for two turns as a nat four. I'm sold. And then taking a look at the 5 star shock over here, it also receives a 20% damage increase and then boosts up that 50% shock to 70% chance for 2 turns. So not only do you have a nap 4 that has a 2 turn very decent rate shock on a 3 star skill, but also the 5 star skill, what more could you ask for? Like what more could you ask for? But yeah, super great Ashramon. She is part of my uh, crowd control squad where I rock 2 lovely light Yuki's in PvP offense paired it with my light griffin and my dark merlin and we're just smiley face gaming over there i use that baby girl every single day in pvp great for clan versus clan as well wouldn't really take her into pve in terms of doing wave clearing because while she can do that you know mons like fire jack could just have a faster animation can get to their five star skill a lot quicker and yeah that's pretty much it 
I mean, she's also part of my lovely uh, auto uh, Tower of Chaos squad too. So from floor 0 to 100, I use my exact same PvP team and get to floor 120 every single time. No problem. So definitely a worthwhile investment if you have the other Astromon to pair up with this lovely uh, baby girl. All right, and then last but definitely not least is the lovely Dark Yuki. She is a tank type, you guys. She's coming in with nearly 40k HP, 2.3k attack, and then a whopping 1.9k defense stat. So I know what you're thinking. You're like, wow, she has no defense at all. It doesn't matter how much HP that she has because she's just going to pass away. Well, I hate to tell you this, but you're probably wrong. She is still very useful, especially with that super evolution to help boost up that lovely defense on her. And her HP stat is already good enough. So you could technically get away with rocking maybe like an HP defense defense gem set depending on your usage for her. But taking a look at the skills, this is the first time in Yuki's history where her moves aren't the same for her 3 and 5 star skill. It's like Smart Study was making up her kit and was like, you know what? We can actually use more than one skill on this Astromon. Let's just do it for Dark Yuki only. And everyone else there was like, oh, okay, sure. But taking a look at the three-star skill, SP Siphon. She siphons X amount of uh, SP away from the enemy. Very great for crowd control and preventing the enemy from getting their five-star skill off. And then for the five-star skill, Sap comes back once again with an 80% chance for three types of Sap. So three Sap stacks for one turn. I know, once again, just like Light Yuki, you're like, Elio, this sounds terrible. Why would anyone pick freaking Dark Yuki as part of the Light and Dark Nat 4 selection cards? Why would anyone use her? Wait. Just wait. There's more. So SP Siphon does receive a 30% damage increase. Could be useful, could not be useful. Her main selling point isn't so much her raw damage, even though she is a Dark Mon. But here's where the spice comes in. So sap, remember it was 80% chance of three types of sap for one turn? Congratulations, fully booked up. This sap goes up to two turns. 100% chance of three times sap. I don't know of any other nat 4 in the game, at least right off the dome, that has this percentage of sap that is 100%. There might be one or two, if I can think of them, which I can at the time of this video here, but the main selling point of this is that that is a very high rate of sap for very low investment if you think about it because the other astronaut that come to mind with three times sap is water artemis who is a nat 5 and then also fire persephone who's also a nat 5 but you're telling me i can get a slice of that pie with a nat 4 uh oh i'm all in fam so i personally end up using my dark yuki in golems b15 and you can also use her in the other golems as well if you decide to go that route i've seen her in clan versus clan teams i've seen her in pvp teams as well because while sap isn't very like universally useful it's still viable up to a certain point especially if you have other astromon that can make sure her saps can stick here and the sp siphon is a bit weird but it also works out too in terms of golems because if she's on auto there's a chance one of those astromon that we're fighting here may try and take out one of my dragons but if she gets the sp siphon off on them and they can't do their five star skill everything buffs out so it does work out in the end a bit awkward but once you pair her up with other mons like fire jacket to the point of where she's spamming her five star skill you literally just forget about sp siphon and you have things going on nice and smooth especially later on in the game so she is definitely one of the best sappers in the game and just overall a very good unit because with her being dark type her only elemental weakness is light astromon she's also naturally fairly tanky so if you want to build her more offensively but in this scenario i would just build her with like hp hp defense or hp defense defense just to give her maximum survivability for the lovely golem waves but yeah that's pretty much it you guys this is the updated version of yuki if there's anything to take away from this video it's light and dark yuki are two of the best nat fours in the game hands down very useful uh family right here the rgb do have their uses especially in terms of like mid game titans but once you get deep into titans they do fall off and nothing really rung a bell with me outside of, I believe, the wood one who has double exposed weakness in terms of using them, you know, in the dimension defense or even the dimension dungeon. If you need defense down, feel free to bring her in there, which also reminds me that I do use my Dark Yukis in the dimension uh, dungeon as well. I use them against Fire Benji, who is, you know, he's not immune to sap, but he takes less sap damage and I, I still just use him anyways. 
Why? Because they survive, they can get their saps off super quick, and it doesn't matter if you are slightly resistant to sap, since you're not immune to it, you're not immune to the 5,000 stacks that get applied to you and you end up passing away regardless. But that's pretty much it for the Yuki review, you guys. More um, updates for other Ashramon are on the way here. Uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already, even though you just saw my cat's tail. And yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya.